Okay, so in this lecture we look at some more properties of Legendre polynomials. Specifically, we will work out the recurrence relation that is satisfied by Legendre polynomials. Okay, so we have seen that the general method for figuring out this recurrence relation would be to first uh, write down these three quantities s of x, w of x and a comma b which we know for the Legendre polynomials the way we have set it up. So s of x is x squared minus 1 w of x is just 1 and the interval of interest is minus 1 to plus 1. So the Rodrigue's formula is pn of x is equal to 1 over 2 to the n, n by, uh, times n factorial which is the normalization we chose in such a way that pn of 1 is the same for all um, n and um, it's so this normalization times the nth derivative of x squared minus 1 the whole power n right. So it, we have also seen how it's convenient to pull out this minus 1 to the n factorial outside. Okay, um, we can directly verify from this uh, Legendre, from, from the Rodrigue's formula that in fact Legendre polynomials are somewhat like the Hermite polynomials. We have also seen this visually that they have uh, you know definite parity. So for a given n um, you know if, uh, depending upon if n is even or odd you would get um, uh, even or odd parity. So if, if n is equal to 2 for example you will get pn of minus x is equal to pn of plus x as you can directly verify by plugging in minus x in the Rodrigue's formula. For example if you put it here you will see that since uh, you know this part has only x squared in it so it does not care about whether it you have a minus sign or a plus sign and the denominator has an x to the n. So you are, you are taking a derivative with respect to dx to the n. So you will get this minus 1 to the n. So therefore you have depending on if n is even or odd you will get a minus 1 or a plus 1 here. So, so in fact you will get exactly like Hermit polynomials you'll, as you increase n you are going to alternate between uh, even and odd polynomials. Now this has an immediate consequence right so this is this parity and definite parity and alternating nature of it immediately implies that the standard three term recurrence relation is actually a two term recurrence relation. So the argument is very similar to how we did it with, with Hamid polynomial so the idea is basically so if you have the three term recurrence relation you have some pn n plus 1 of x is connected to x times pn and there is a pn minus 1 of x term but there is also a term involving just pn. Now you know each of these three terms because there is an x times pn and a pn minus 1 and pn plus 1 of x will have the same parity you know because parity is the same when you increase uh, uh, you know n minus 1 and n plus 1 of course it is clear and pn of x has a different parity so but if you multiply by x that is going to become the same as the parity corresponding to n plus 1 or n minus 1. So pn of x has no business to be here. So the, co the coefficient which tags along with pn is going to go to 0. So that is why we might as well start with this two term recurrence relation and, uh, and work out these unknown coefficients. So this alpha n needs to be worked out, gamma n needs to be worked out. And these we will again invoke the Rodrigue's formula and some properties of Legendre polynomials we have already seen to work these out. Okay, let us start with the Rodrigue's formula and we have seen that there is also already an inbuilt prescription for evaluating alpha n, right. So to find alpha n we need to find the coefficient corresponding to the largest power in of, of x in this polynomial. So polynomial p n of x has you know is a polynomial of degree n. So you need to work out the coefficient corresponding to x to the n and if you want to work out the coefficient corresponding to x to the n then you need to work out the coefficient um, you know what happens when you do this nth derivative right and basically it is the highest order term that that is the only one which is going to survive as far as you know taking n derivatives is concerned. So we see immediately from here that the highest order term is actually just x to the 2 n then plus lower order terms it does not matter so much because when you take the nth derivative um, you know it is it is only this 
term which is going to give, uh, result in an x to the n. Everybody else after that is going to have lower order which is not uh, the you know the, the terms of interest at this point. So, if you look at just this object then you see that taking n derivatives is going to give you 2n times 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 2 all the way up to n plus 1. So, concentrating on just the first term we see that it is going to be just this and there is a compact way of writing this. So, the numerator you can multiply by n factorial and denominator you multiply by n factorial and you see that the numerator can then be written as 2 n the whole factorial. So, the coefficient of the highest power x to the n in p n of x is seen to be 2 n the whole factorial divided by 2 to the n times n factorial squared. Right? So, from the general prescription we, we know that to find alpha n you must take the this kind of a coefficient in p n plus 1 of x which is basically this and then divide by this the uh, you know highest coefficient in p n of x. So, division by this is the same as multiplying by the denominator and dividing by the numerator. So, the first term is I have just put in replaced n with n plus 1. So, I have 2 times n plus 1 the whole factorial divided by 2 to the n plus 1 and then I have these two factors n plus 1 factorial times n plus 1 factorial in the denominator and then I have to multiply by 2 to the n times n factorial times n factorial divided by 2 n the whole factorial. So, if I work out this algebra lots of simplifications happen 2 n to the n will cancel with 2 to the n plus 1 there is a 2 and then you have 2 times n plus 1 the whole factorial uh, and you know so you can expand and write it as 2 n plus 2 the whole factorial that is going to give you just these 2 terms 2 n factorial will cancel with this then you have 2 n plus 1 times 2 n plus 2 2 n plus 2 can be written as 2 times n plus 1 one of these n plus 1s will go and then one of these n plus 1 stays and there is a 2 which also cancels and basically you are left with just 2 n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. You can convince yourself by checking this explicitly that all these simplifications indeed result in just 2 n plus 1 over n plus 1. So, therefore, our recurrence relation now takes this form p n plus 1 of x must be equal to in place of alpha n we write 2 n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 times x times p n of x plus there is this coefficient which still needs to be determined gamma n times p n 1 p n minus 1 of x. So, in order to work this gamma n what we will do is we will exploit the normalization properties of uh, of uh, well orth orthogonality and normalization properties of p n plus 1 right. So, normalization of course, comes from the specific type of coefficients we have chosen for the, the polynomial and we have already worked out the normalization integral. So, let us uh, you know exploit the facts that are already available to us and cleverly use them here. So, what we do is first we will multiply throughout with p n minus 1 of x and integrate from minus 1 to 1. So, when we do this we see that the left hand side must go to 0 because p n plus 1 is orthogonal to p n minus 1. So, this integral minus 1 to 1 p n minus 1 of x times p n plus 1 of x dx is indeed 0 uh, and on the right hand side we have you know this integral uh, first of these uh, integrals we have to work out. So, in 2 n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 minus 1 to 1 dx times x times p n of x times p n minus of uh, p n minus 1 of x we leave it as it is. But when you do this second one plus gamma n times you know it is this integral of p n minus 1 with p n minus 1 minus 1 to 1 dx which is really the normalization integral which we, we have already evaluated and so we have to just put down 2 divided by 2 times n minus 1 plus 1. So, in the which which basically boils down to 2 divided by 2 n minus 1 right. So, it is just the normalization integral, but with the index n minus 1 right. So, now what we have managed to show is we can rewrite the same expression as an uh, as an expression for gamma n in terms of this integral which we have to evaluate. So, we can write this as minus 2 n plus uh, n minus 1 times 2 n plus 1 divided by 2 times n plus 1 integral minus 1 to 1 dx x p n of x times p n minus 1 of x. So, all that we need to do is evaluate this integral and then we are done. So, it turns out that we can be clever once again. So, what we will do is we, we will evaluate this integral again using this equation 1. So, we want to evaluate this 
but we will go back to this equation and multiply by a different quantity this time. So let's suppose we multiply throughout not with Pn minus 1, but suppose we multiply throughout with Pn plus 1. So then we have the left hand side in, and then integrate from minus 1 to 1. So the left hand side becomes the normalization integral and then Pn plus 1 with Pn minus 1 uh, is, going to, uh, is going to cancel. So the right hand side only the first term will survive, the second term will go because uh, Pn plus 1 and Pn minus 1 uh, are orthogonal polynomials. So you have eliminated this term involving the unknown gamma n. So we will get this expression. So on the left hand side of course you have to write 2 divided by 2 times n plus 1 plus 1. So that is going to give us 2 divided by 2n plus 3 on the left hand side. That is just the normalization integral for the polynomial n plus 1. Then we have this integral 2n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 integral minus 1 to 1 dx x times pn of x times pn plus 1 of x and then plus 0. So basically the, this is an unknown integral but it is not really an unknown integral because we have we know the left hand side. So we can write this uh, rearrange this and in fact we can it is convenient to change the index n to n minus 1 because really what we are after is this integral. And in fact this integral is also something like this except that there is a shift you know n minus 1 has become n and n has become n plus 1 here. So we might as well you know use so we have basically worked this integral out. All we are doing is you know send all these uh, factors to the left hand side and then change n to n minus 1 and so we have the result 2 divided by 2 n plus 1. So uh, in place of n we put n uh, um, n minus 1. So we have um, 2 divided by 2 n plus 1 here and then n plus 1 will become n and then this will become 2 n minus 1. So basically we have managed to extract the result that we were after using this clever you know um, clever way of using the orthonormality properties of our uh, of the Legendre polynomial. So now all we have to do is go back and plug all this information back in and so gamma n is in equation 2 is given by minus 2n minus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 2 times n plus 1 times we have you know this stuff that we have to multiply 2 divided by 2n plus 1 times n divided by 2n minus 1. So we have lots of cancellations once again and we are just left with 2 goes away we are just left with minus n divided by n plus 1. So we are basically done now. We all have we have all we have to do is to collect all the terms and then we can write so in place of gamma n we write minus n divided by n plus 1. Now of course it makes sense to multiply throughout with n plus 1 and rewrite this recurrence relation as n plus 1 times p n plus 1 of x is equal to 2 n plus 1 uh, uh, times x times p n of x plus um, minus minus n times p n minus 1 of x. So this is actually a very uh, important and useful recurrence relation. So in fact what you can do is you can use this to find higher and higher order uh, uh, polynomials, higher and higher, higher order Legendre polynomials. So if you know, so we already know p0 of x, we know p1 of x. So using this we can work out p2 of x. And then since you know p1 of x and p2 of x you plug it in here on the right hand side and get p3 of x. So if you know any n minus 1 and n you can get get to n plus 1 right that is what this is telling us. So it is a very useful uh, recurrence relation. So we, this can be used to set up on a computer to for example work out you know whole sequence of uh, Legendre polynomials right. So uh, we will see that there is, uh, there is another recurrence relation as well which is satisfied by um, the Legendre polynomials and then there are a bunch of re results which are all closely connected and which are you know often extracted with great ease with the use of the generating function approach right. But that is coming up later as far as this lecture is concerned we have directly used uh, the Rodrigues formula and some basic properties of orthonormality with uh, along with the normalization integral of um, Legendre polynomials and worked out this recurrence relation. Thank you.